Hello everybody, we're talking about our pinwheel and cornerstone throw today. It's a really simple project, but rather larger than the ones you've had before. But it's about practice, this is. So all your pieces are in as normal. These are your cornerstones. Then we've got our pieces that are going to make our um, pinwheel. And then these pieces here are our sashing. So the reason I've given you this is, um, well, I presume you've re read your letter by now. <laughs> um, I wanted to give you something with a bit more uh, meat in it that you can practice your techniques. Um, so we're doing a pinwheel block and don't race through them. What I thought was if you take your time, try and get accuracy, press nice and calmly um, without stretching. And then we're doing cornerstones in sashing, which is also a nice skill to learn. So I'm just going to talk you through them, the basic principles. Uh, you've got your pattern as normal. And as you can see, if marked close enough, tells you everything. Lots of pictures as normal. Uh, this is your half square triangle, which most of you know how to do now. And this is the construction and the pressing of your pinwheel block. Then we move on to the cornerstones. But, you know, don't think you've got to get this finished by next month. Make it an ongoing thing that you can dip into through the summer as we go along. So we'll start with the pinwheel block. Um, you can, where are you looking, Mark? Are you up your hands. Great. Uh, we've got each pinwheel needs four squares of fabric, two prints and two backgrounds. The backgrounds are all the same within your kit. You've got enough. Um, prints there's a couple of variations you'll have two blocks left over so if there's one you don't particularly like or you like one more you can switch them about a little bit yourselves so the first thing it tells you to do like all half square triangles is to draw a line across sorry a line across the center of the background fabric so diagonal line corner to corner take it to the uh, machine and then stitch a beautifully accurate quarter of an inch seam but down both sides of the line so this is your first stage you need to draw a thin line not a great big fat marker line and keep your foot or however you're measuring up against the line so we go one way and then we go the other you don't have, you don't have to turn around if your machine prefers you to come out of your work that's fine let it go through do the same with your second one and then you're going to cut it on the line so we're cutting away from us opening my blade cutting away from me just do that again i think it caught a little bit close my blade very important don't forget that open and close your blade between each cut i told you look good little 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 see what happened there little bit of a catch because you're not standing up it is you're quite right mark it's because i'm not standing up you can hear it i could hear it though in my blade but it that is the reason then you're going to press these seams towards the darkest fabric so in this case I, I did them all towards the print fabric so away from me nice and flat none of this nice flat away from me so you do that with the um two sets and then you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this then what you've got to do place them out on your table like so like so like so and it doesn't matter if yours look like that or they could be the other way around as long as they're all the same. So you need to keep them the same as each other. Otherwise it just throws the look of your quilt off, although they're still a pinwheel block. So then we take two of these, pop them. Oh no, the next thing I need to say, don't forget if you want to trim your ears off, you can. So this is your ear, your sticky out bit. And as we're doing, you know, we're not speed sewing. So let's, let's take them off, shall we? You'll see, I mean, look how much neater it looks already. So snip it off. You're not going to need it. It's not going to fall apart. Nothing dramatic is going to happen to it. So look how much neater these two look than these two. And it makes it easier for lining them up as well. So we're going to, I'll start with this one. We're going to sew the middle seams, flip it over, and then 
line them up and you can feel it lock together. So I'm just doing like moving it with my fingers and I can feel that this seam is together all the way down. So I'm going to stitch down there. Quarter of an inch seam again. And I'm going to pick the other one up and feed it through. So I'm doing the same again. I haven't trimmed my ears, so you can still you can see the difference. I'll do one with, one without. I know a lot of you uh, are enjoying the projects and keen to get them uh, done, but. You know, we do want to learn a little bit along the way as well. So just really take your time on this. Don't don't worry about it a little bit at a time. What you can see here, can you see that mark there? That's what we're aiming for, that those points are in exactly the same line. I'll, need your fingers, yeah. yeah. I'll check the other one and see if that one, yeah, that one, that was, can you see like only a very little smidge all out. Um, then I'm going to press them now and I press them both towards this darker fabric. So this one I'm going to press this way, and this one I'm going to press that way. That way your seams are opposite to each other and then they're locked together as with every all the others. So on our mat, away from me. I bet you can see my left-handed pressing has now improved. It's harder than you think, left handy pressing mark. Definitely. It's only laughing. You have to give him you have to try it with the ironing, left handy. I don't ironing. think so. You must have it with the right. <laughs> so there we go. You can see the difference in them. We've got a little tail sticking out here, our ears, but nothing on this one. And it just does make it crisper. So try that with these. Put them right sides together. Now we're going to join that central seam. And then you will click them together like so you will see one seems going one way one the other and we're aiming to get them exactly spot on in the middle now you know some people are more particular than others some people have to have every stitch correct you know me I'm, I work so fast it's crazy um, so I don't mind a little bit of imperfection in my work it's a handcraft it's not machine made so I don't mind that but if you do then it's just stitching so you can undo it start again and and strive for what you find you know what is your best uh, but don't beat yourself up about it being a little bit out let's have a look at these down here mark and you'll see like this one look see there that that does is that showing up on your camera There's, that one is that much out and um obviously i left it on purpose to show you in the big picture <laughs> it, it won't be seen no that's right in the big picture exactly what mark said so across here and then this one so we'll see what's happened to this one shall we perfect look perfect that's because i took my time doing it whereas the others i was whipping them through to get them done does that happen if your ears are taken off or does it not matter it's be it's easier if your ears are, are taken off so it, all of the steps help and this is just about you know trying to get it so that it's as good as it can be now here in the center when you've got all of these points coming together this is where you get a lot of bulk and you can see ears as well in the way there so you know do, do take them off this time and then you'll see you know if it makes much difference to you and we're going to open this seam in the center don't very often do that but that is just literally to stop the bulk uh because you can imagine if you press this seam one way you'd have like eight layers over here so like that turn him over Give it another press. Lovely, look at that. Right, if you can, can you look at the quilt now, Mark? At the top, Mark's going to pan across the top row, hopefully. We've got a five by five blocks, and you can see the very top row, you've got cornerstone sashing, cornerstone sashing all the way across. You come to the pinwheels that we've just done, and they're joined together with a sashing strip. So I'm just going to do two rows of two to give you the idea of exactly how we're going to do it. Because it's just the same, doesn't matter how long it is. It's a, I think it's a lovely little quilt. I really like it. And and you did, didn't you, Mark? And yeah, Sarah when she definitely. came in. Yes. Uh, really lovely little quilt. Nice shades and a very good... We I did it for the practice. 
I know it's bigger than your spools mats and your little things you've done so far. So what you do then, you join. So this would be our row of five. We've just got two in our row. So you take a sashing strip and you're going to join it. I've joined it to this one and I've pressed the seam towards the sashing strip. So I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to show you the difference it makes with the ears. OK, so stay where you are. If I'm trying to line this up here, I can see the end, but the ear is sticking out. So I know where it is, but lift it up, lift it up, no, lift it up. I want to see it from that side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can see it's a little tiny bit of guesswork. If you've got no ears, so I'm just going to turn this round and now I line it up. As you line it up, you can see point exactly, point, yeah. can't you? You can yeah. see the difference. Yeah. That make that's another point it makes where you, when your ears have gone. So trim them off. Just snip them off all over the floor and then hoover them up. That's what I do. Or if your workroom is really lovely, you can do it over your bin. Unfortunately, my workroom isn't in the Mine's in the working state, not the lovely state. So this time now, this one, I want to press the seam in towards the sashing. OK, so I'm going to turn it away so I can see and press away from me. That's all you do. Little press away from me. Beautiful. So there we've got, two, these could be two rows of five, couldn't they? Um, if I was you, I'd make all my pinwheels, lay them out, swish them about if you wanted to. So you've not got two of the same next to each other. Um, are these my cornerstones? This is not the right quilt, is it? Are these this colour? Yes. Oh, not the right size. You got to you cut them yet? You got to uh, sew them yet? I haven't cut them yet. Sew them. No, but they're not the right size. Any chance yours aren't the right size? <laughs> They've got to be one and a half inches. So simple as that. Stitch it onto there. And we're going to join our rectangles with our sashing. Pop it onto there. Now, because we've stitched the, um, pressed the sashing towards the sashing strip on the pinwheel row, we needs need to go opposite. So although it's darker, you're going to press them out towards, away from the, um, away from the little square. <laughs> it's because that's not normal to do that. You usually would press them that way. So we out like so. Then that goes in here, like so, and the seams are opposite. So they're coming in on this row, out on this row, in on that row. So simply put them together, click your seam together and stitch across the row. So this is the same as your row. It tells you on your five to do all the way and join them with your sashing and put a sashing strip either end, otherwise you'll have nowhere to put your pinwheels on your outside. So do all this though, just take your time, enjoy the process, and get them as beautiful as you can. I'm pressing, I prefer to press standing up as well. Look at that, beauty. And that will go on there, you'll join that to it um, and that's as simple as it is really you just keep going until you've got your rows but we're just trying to keep it as neat as we can and um, get your rows together I nearly fell off my seat then that's what we're laughing <laughs> um, get them nice and neat and away you go you haven't got back in the modding in this kit because as you can see it's much bigger than it could it normally is so if you want some that's on the website, you can get a finishing kit for it, but you might have some of your own. So please enjoy the project. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate it.